the installation of SQL Lite 3 just couldn't get any easier than it already is. Well, actually, there's one way it could get easier. It could get easier if it's already installed on your machine, which is one thing I always recommend people check just before they do an installation of any tool to see if SQLite's already installed on your machine. And it often is because it's so light. Uh, all you have to do is open up a terminal window and type in SQLite 3, click enter, and hopefully nothing comes up. Well, that's a lot of red ink there. Reminds me of my grade 12 English paper. A couple of things to point out. One L, people are tempted to put two L's in there and you get of the number three at the end. Now, trying to get this to fail, that's not so important. But when we try and get it to work, it is. So how do you install it? Well, the first thing you got to do is just mosey on over to the SQLite download page. And then you got to pass by the Android download, the Mac OS download, the Linux download. And there is the ugly stepsister of all the great operating systems, the Windows download. I'm going to download the 64-bit DIL. And I'm also going to download the bundle of command line tools. And it just takes a second to download. You can see it's like, what, four megs in size, one meg in size. It is nothing. This is light. I'm just going to extract those files right here. Now, of course, I'm not going to set up those files there. I'm going to copy them. And you can see it's like five files in exe file, SQL light. 3.exe, be careful about the naming there. A couple of dills, that's about it. Now, I often see people create an SQLite folder on their root drive. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm gonna create a new folder called SQLite3, and I'm gonna put that in my tools folder. You can see there's a, a friendly little Postgres uh, folder in there as well. Looks like SQL Server 2022, but not to be outdone by this SQL Lite folder as well with some really good SQL Lite goodness inside of it. Now, I'm going to copy that folder name because I've got to add that folder to my, I was going to say class path. Uh, that's a, a Java term. Maybe it's just my operating system path. So I'm going to say edit the system environment variables. A lot of people look at this uh, on the, the left-hand side, the Windows Start menu. I'm not using Windows 7. It's just a little fun little tool that I installed that makes my computer look like Windows 7. Just makes me feel young again. Okay, we need to set up some environment variables here. Specifically, we need to edit that path. So I'm going to find the path there. I'm going to hit that edit button hard. I want to add something new. And you know what I'm adding. Boom. All of a sudden, I am adding that SQL Lite 3 folder. I'll click apply. I'll click OK. I'll click OK. I'll click apply. Then I just mosey on over to my terminal window, my PowerShell, and I keep my fingers crossed and I type in SQL Lite 3, remembering there's only one L and there's got to be one 3. I type enter and Boom, all of a sudden it says, you know what? SQL Lite is successfully installed, version 3.46.1. Now I can go ahead and I can create a database. I can create a table. I can do inserts on SQL Lite. I can do updates and deletes, all of the CRUD operations. And that is what we're going to do next. After I exit out of here, and that's actually one of the questions I get. How do you exit out of SQL Lite when you've gone into it? Just type dot exit and boom, once again, you get your command prompt back. But creating tables, creating databases, doing some CRUD operations, that is what we're going to do next.